The battle for Georgia and the control of the Senate, it is heading into the home stretch. We only have 15 days until Election Day, and voters in Georgia, well, they're already turning out in record numbers, with more than 1.4 million people in that state having already headed to the polls since early voting started a week ago. Now, President Trump says he's going to come back to Georgia for a rally right before the election, but his false attacks on the electoral system and his conspiracy theories about his own loss could actually be hurting the Republican candidates. Let me turn it over to Nate Silver from 538 with more on that. Georgia is one state where the polls were fairly accurate on Election Day. So as polls again show a close race in these two Georgia Senate runoffs, it's worth looking at them seriously as the campaign intensifies. 538 polling averages have Republican David Perdue pretty much tied with Democrat John Ossoff for the regular Georgia seat. And the same is true between Democrat Raphael Warnock and Republican Kelly Leffler for the special Georgia seat. There's something more subtle going on here, though. Purdue and Leffler have actually gained a bit of ground in polls, closing in on earlier Democratic leads. That may be due to a shift away from President Trump's rhetoric as he's been questioning the validity of the election and refusing to concede. Polling shows two-thirds of Republicans agree with Trump's bogus claims that the election wasn't fair. And officials are concerned that if their voters think elections are rigged, they may figure, hey, why bother to turn up at all? Recent Republican rhetoric has tried to pivot, though, by implicitly or even explicitly acknowledging Joe Biden's victory. Mike Pence, for example, in a rally this week, spoke of Georgia as being the last line of defense for the GOP, which concedes there will be a Democratic House and a Democratic president. And historically, when a new party takes over the White House, voters want balanced government. We usually see what we call a midterm penalty that punishes the president's party by around five percentage points. As you just saw there, um, President Trump, he's actually making things more confusing for Republicans while he's saying in one breath that the system is rigged, then turn around and telling those folks, well, go ahead and vote anyway. The president, he's also been creating a circular firing squad, taking direct aim at top election officials in the state of Georgia and even going after its governor, Republican Brian Kemp. Trump's still pressing Kemp to call a special session to challenge the election results, and he calls Kemp a so-called Republican, a rhino. To this point, Kemp has said no. Despite months of attacks from Trump, Kemp, he attended the White House Christmas party and even posed for pictures with his daughter in front of the tree. Kemp now getting eviscerated online with trolls calling him spineless and worse. Now, on that note, RFL's field producer Annie Anderson, she is on the ground in Georgia, and she spent the day following the candidates and also speaking with voters in Georgia. Lawmakers in Washington, D.C. worked over the weekend to find a COVID stimulus bill both sides could accept. More help is on the way. Moments ago, in consultation with our committees, the four leaders of the Senate and the House finalized an agreement. Our purpose has always been to crush the virus, to put money in the pockets of the American people, which we do in this legislation. Meanwhile, down in Georgia, campaigns staying in high gear. Early voting numbers topping 1.3 million in just the first week. Both Republicans and Democrats feeling positive. Well, I think with the numbers that we're seeing and with the results of this last election, I do feel very optimistic that both Ossoff and Warnock will be our next senators for the state of Georgia. Um, the numbers don't lie. I think Kelly and Purdue are going to win. And while the phrase elections have consequences is nothing new, Democrats I spoke to say today that's more evident than ever. That's why this, this election is so important, because if we want more, we need to send Ossoff and Warnock to the Senate so we can actually get to the business of helping everyday people, everyday Americans, everyday Georgians. That's, what we, that's why this election has so much importance. Give us the COVID stimulus bill doesn't have as much assistance as Democrats originally wanted, but Republicans gave as well, especially when it came to the sticking point at the lending power of the Federal Reserve. 
But it's the reduced relief for people that has some Democrats in Georgia saying it's not enough. Clearly, I don't think it's enough. Uh, clearly, we need to do more to help working families and those and Americans, um, again, who have suffered so much. Um, you know, if, if uh, we are willing to bail out corporations and banks, um, the least we can do is to support uh, working families across this country to weather the storm. And at the same time, Peach State Republicans happy Democrats had to compromise on their demands. So I better what Pelosi, you know, was talking about 2.3 uh, trillion, I think, several months ago. Uh, she's changed her mind. Uh, now that Biden looks like he's going to be president, she's backtracked, and you know, she, Biden still trying to make sure Biden gets credit for it. Uh, 900 billion sounds a lot, a lot better than 3 trillion. This afternoon, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer tweeting, lawmakers will work on this again under the Biden administration. Young Democrat Ethan Knight Scott saying he knows what happens in the future with any other COVID stimulus package will depend on who wins Georgia's Senate elections. If they get elected, there's a chance that there will be another one and a bigger one that will give, you know, my own family and other families more support. In Gwinnett County, Annie Anderson for RNN. Coming up next. You know, all the late night comics, they're really going to miss Trump when he's gone from the White House, including Saturday Night Live. After the break, I'm going to show you SNL's farewell to the Donald.